So welcome to uh, Clear Mountain Interview. Today, we're blessed to be joined by Geshe Delek Wangmo, or Geshe La. And uh, I'll just begin with a brief introduction for those who don't know Geshe La. Geshe Delek Wangmo was born in Litang, Tibet. Her village, Detsa, lacked a school, so she spent most of her time tending animals with her nomadic family. She ordained at 15 with Tenzin Delek Rinpoche, who then led her and other nuns on a pilgrimage to Lhasa, a 950-mile journey involving continuous prostration, taking one and a half years. The nuns then traveled to India and connected with the Dalai Lama in Varanasi. With few nunneries available, the Tibetan Nuns Project began building Shuk Sep and Dolma Ling near Dharamsala. In 1994, Delek Wangma moved into Dolma Ling, which was dedicated to higher Buddhist education for nuns and inaugurated by the Dalai Lama in 2005. Dolma Ling offers a 17-year curriculum for the Geshema degree, equivalent to a PhD in Tibetan Buddhism. Delek Wangmo earned her Geshema degree in 2017, becoming one of the first women to ever be awarded the degree, and went on to study at Gyoto Tantric University. In 2019, she became a philosophy teacher at Dolma Ling Nunnery, an institute, and was appointed an election commissioner by the Tibetan parliament in exile in 2020. She's currently visiting Sarvasti Abbey in Newport, Washington. And Geshe-la, uh, it's just such a delight to meet you. I'm really honored that you took the time, and thank you so much for your presence and for agreeing to interview. Okay, also nice to meet you. Good evening. Yeah. How are you liking Servasti Abbey so far? Oh, I think they are here is very quiet place and the Dhamma pet is very good. So I appreciate here. I'm so happy here. <laughs> That's wonderful. I was just there about two weeks ago and it was really special. So I have a, maybe I'll just begin into some questions then. Um, the first is, we know you grew up in a small town or a small village, Detsa. Why did you ordain at 15 years of age? And how did your life change once you'd ordained? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I was a ch children, I <clears throat> looked after yaks and sheep. So I most, yeah. Uh, I spent most time to look after yaks, also at my home. Then <clears throat> I saw some nuns and monks. They study Buddhism. They stay in the monastery. And I saw they are very happy and they are very peaceful. Because then I think why they are peaceful and they are happy because they're studying uh, Buddhism. The, Buddhi <clears throat> yeah, the Buddhism make my peaceful and happy. So I think this. Then, <clears throat> yeah, oh, I want to become a nun because I want to happiness. If I want to happiness, mm, yeah, happiness, uh, over, everlasting happiness. Mm. Then I, oh, I want to practice Buddhism. So I ask my parents, may I become a nun? Yeah, they supported me. But they, yeah, first day, yeah, they uh, gave me good advice. If you become a nun, then you stay, yeah, you live yeah, your whole life a nun. Because some yeah, persons first they want to become a nun or monks. They stay for one or some years, then change again lay people. Yeah. So my parents, if you become a nun, then you don't again lay people. Then I promised my parents, oh, I, I become a nun my whole life. Yeah, so then I become a nun. And then yeah, I'm, my change, then yeah, so many change because my clothes change, 
my hair change also my mind change my walk change mm -hmm. yeah so many change uh, then i become a nun mm -hmm. oh i think then i got good opportunity to study and practice dhamma practice mm -hmm. So then I become a nun after. But when I left people during that time, I want to buy everything because yeah, I change um, Sundays new clothes. Yeah, change Sundays new clothes. And when I go to the market, I saw new T-shirt or new um, coat, uh, colorful. So I want to buy this, but sometimes I don't get buy. Uh, I don't get this. During that time, I have suffering. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I become I became a nun after I don't get this suffering. So I ch so many change when I became I a nun. Yeah. Thank you, Geshela. What did your other 15 year old friends think of you becoming a nun? Yeah, they appreciate to me because in our Tibetan traditions, <clears throat> in, a, in a family, three or four ch children, the oldest children that uh, they mm, looked after at their parents and the younger children two, three go to the monastery. So my friend, yeah, I have some friend, uh, 50 years, 15 years old. When I became a nun, they appreciate to me. Thank you, Geshe-la. That's yeah. to the fact that you had that insight and made that vow when you were 15 years old is uh, astounding. Mm. I know that you didn't just go forth as a, a nun at that point, but you actually soon went on a 950 mile year and a half prostration pilgrimage from your village to Lhasa. What motivated you to do that? And what was your daily schedule like? Yeah, I have good motivation because yeah. <clears throat> I want to uh, accumulate it merit. So if I want to accumulate it merit, then how I do during that time, I think. Then I heard I have uh, three root lama in Tibet. I, I heard one, one of my root lama, he, yeah. Yeah, go to Lhasa. I heard, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he lead some people from Lithan to Lhasa. And during that time, he, yeah, prostate from Lithan to Lhasa. I heard this. Then I asked my parents, parents, yeah, may I go with my root lama? I asked my parents, also my parents, yeah, you can go, yeah. They supported me. Mm -hmm. Then, oh, I think, yeah, if I prostrate on the way, oh, I have good motivation, or I make good karma, I created good karma, I think this. Mm -hmm. So then I yeah, pro prostrate on the way, from Lhasa to the later. Mm -hmm. During that time, I have, so yeah. First day we came from our family. During that time, we took uh, many food and many clothes, yeah, from our family. When we arrived at Hap Road, then the, our food ran out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then how, yeah, then what do we do? We think first, then we begged in the village food. Yeah, 
the villagers are very kind. They gave us cooked food for each enough for one yeah, week. Yeah. Then we prostate again. Mm -hmm. We can do. Sometimes in, yeah, in the summer, heavy rainy. So then we continue prostate and our clothes got wet. Mm -hmm. In the winter time, and in Tibet, so many snow fell. During that time, we co very cold, but we continue prostate. Yeah, uh, sometimes we are, we, I have, yeah, sometimes, yeah. During that time, I have got problem. Because sometimes our food ran out and sometimes very cold. Yeah. Got problem. But I think mm -hmm, it is not problem. I try to overcome, overcome that problem. Because I want to help me yeah, over, yeah, over last day, happiness. If I have everlasting happiness, I try to uh, create karma, good karma. So we can do. During that time, when we got problem and suffering, during that time, we think again, oh, I have problem, I have suffering because I am in Sansara, I am existing in Sansara. So sometimes we have problem, but during that time, we try to overcome that problem. Then we yeah, can do everything. And during that time, we try to courage. So we can do, yeah. Keshela, that is so inspiring. And did you, how many hours a day would you prostrate for? And, and what does that look like? Is it prostrating every single step or every three steps? Yeah, we said this is our whole body like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in a day, we prostrate uh, seven hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, some, some, yeah, person very fast. There are six or five hours they can do each day. So, yeah, some persons, they prostrate very slowly. Then it took uh, seven hours a day. How far would you go every day about Geshe-la? Sorry? How, how far would you go every day? How many kilometers? Oh, I, I couldn't say in a kilometer because I don't understand the kilometer in when, when <laughs> I was in Tibet. <laughs> and did you ever, did you ever get bored or tired? And how did you keep, how did you make yourself keep going for a year and a half through all that? Mm, yeah, sometimes bored, sometimes tired, but mm. I try to overcome that tried and that problem. And what did you focus, what were you reciting in your mind or who were you sort of dedicating those bows to? Was it to uh, Avilokiteshvara or to the Buddha or what mantra would you keep in your mind? Yeah, um, I keep in, uh, during that time, during that time, prostrate when? When I prostrate, prostrate during that time, mm. do you say? Mm. Yeah, during that time, so, yeah, sometimes I take three refugees, three refu refugees. Refugees. Yeah, yeah mm. refugees. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I, yeah, um, I'll look, yeah, I, Reciting our Lokishira's mantra. Mm -hmm. 
And did you have any encounters during those that year and a half that kind of particularly stick out like someone who really helped you keep going or an animal that you sort of encountered or, or any, any stories, particular story that stands out when you think back? Oh, uh, I've met, met so many people and so many animals, but I don't meet special people and special animals. <laughs> <laughs> I will accept that answer. Thank you, Keshela. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keshela, what was um, what was the? How do you think that pilgrimage changed you after you did it? After a year and a half, did you feel like the same person or a different person? Well, I think mm, I ch I changed a little bit. Yeah, because when I prostrated. During that time, almost mostly nuns and monks. The nuns and monks, they practice, practice Dhamma. So they are very peaceful and they talk each other respected. So I go follow them. So I change when I speak, other people respect it. And when I uh, met my root lama or high class, I respect this. And I speak with them, I respect fully. So that is change. Mm -hmm. Also, I think I create, I created good karma. Yeah. Thank you, Geshala. You got to Lhasa and you couldn't enter. So I believe then you went down to India and you were part of starting Dolma Ling uh, Nunnery there. How did you come to go to India and start Dolma Ling? Mm -hmm. in, <clears throat> in Monte Cal from Monte Kalasha, to Nepal, I walked on the mountain for 28 days. Mm -hmm. Then I arrived in Nepal. Uh, Nepal too, I, yeah, I want to for Saranat. Where there, I go to uh, Kalachakar, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, give initiation. I got this. I got ordains his holiness the Dalai Lama first in my life. And Saran Varanasi to Dharamshala, I went by bus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I Dharam, I arrived at Dharamshala. Yeah, I tried to join other nunneries, but I couldn't join the other nunneries because during that time the nunneries the facility is very poor. They don't have enough uh, room. So I couldn't join other nunnery. Then <clears throat> yeah, uh, we request to Chan Rachen Kandola. She is a wife of his Honor and Dalai Lama younger brothers, brother. Yeah. Uh, then we yeah, she during that time she is. Uh, she worked in nuns pro project, yeah. so she helped us. Also, nuns project helped us, and we rented an India house. Mm -hmm. The India house is the don't yeah. It hasn't bathroom and to yeah, toilet. During that time, we have difficult. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> we yeah we stay in India the India house and at day we went to the India Delhi Walker and we built our nunnery. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I took 
uh, rocks and cement might fall yeah, on my back. So during that time, yeah, this place is very new and the food is very different. Also, we yeah, worked very, more, yeah, very hard. So I got have yeah I got problem during that time I yeah I got have no problem during that time I remembered my lovely parents and family but I think again oh I am so lucky because I got his holiness yeah I got Odin his holiness Dalai Lama and I got initiation from him. So I'm lucky. And so <clears throat> during that time, I don't discourage. I have problem. I try to overcome from, to my problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the NANS project help us facilities and we worked. So then we, uh, in 2003, we have some <clears throat> nuns room and kitchen room, kitchen room and a prayer hall. Then we, yeah, we moved our new nunneries, new nunnery. Yeah, we are yeah, um, four nuns share a room. But the room is not big. It a room, uh, bent bed, but bunk bed. So we stay there. Yeah. Thank you, Keshala. How old were you when you were building Dolmaling? Um, six. Uh, yeah. When I was, I came to India. 15, then, yeah, uh, 70. 17. Yeah. yeah. And how 17 long? years old. How long did it take you to build the nunnery? Uh, when I arrived, India, 19, 19, 19, yeah, 19, 19. Hmm. So we built for three years. Three years of building it. Yeah, yeah. And what was the what was the biggest challenge when you were building that nunnery? Challenge. Yeah. So we have re we have got so many problem <laughs> because uh, because when we worked very hard. We building. In that time, the food is not good for me. Usually, food is good, but that food is different for me because I am new there. Mm -hmm. So that is one problem. Mm -hmm. And the, the, in Tibet, Tibet is very cold. In India, during that time, very hot. Mm. So we walked. We building. During that time, the weather is very hot, so we have problem that. And Geshe-la, when you're when you're in these distant lands, um, when you miss uh, kind of that environment where you grew up and stuff, how do you keep your heart bright and happy? Yeah. When I uh, when I yeah, sometimes I just rem yeah, remember it, remember my lovely parents and my country, my village. Yeah. I think in change my mind. Mm -hmm. 
if I yeah, stay with my mother, my parents, how I do with them? Yeah, during that time, oh, I think I, I am very far from my parents, but I do, I practice Dhamma. So, yeah, the, during that time, I think my parents is very glad to me. So, I, yeah, if I stay with my parents, then I, I am a lay people. If I'm lay people, I stay with my parents. I couldn't uh, study in Buddhism like a nun. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, when I re uh, remember the, them, then I change my mind or oh, I practice Dhamma. If I practice Dhamma, I make, create a good karma. It helps my, maybe it helps my, yeah, it connected my parents. So I think in this. Thank you, Keshala. And I know one of the ways that you practice Dhamma was by earning a Geshala degree, which I think took, or a Geshama degree, which took 15 or maybe 17 years. Um, it's a huge undertaking. When did you first realize that you wanted to study to become one of the first female Geshes? Geshes. Yeah. We have Jangguchu. Jangguchu mean is so many nuns went to a place. They came from different nunneries. They, we debate about uh, logic, dhamma kit, the commentary, dhamma kit, dhamma kit, kiti, yeah, by dhamma kiti. So we debate this for one month. That debate is the first held held in two, uh, 1990, around five or six. The, the, this Jangguchen is near the finish. At during that time, we got His Holiness Dalai Lama. Yeah, we got ordains His Holiness Dalai Lama. During that time, he gave speech. The nuns st study debate hard. You will become a Gishima. He said to this, I first heard Gishima name that time. Mm -hmm. Then, oh, I think that speech is very important. So we are first, uh, first level, first class, yeah? So we had big responsibility. So I took responsibility on my shoulder, his speech. So I start, I study, I start debate very hard. Uh, in our nunnery, we st st study uh, for 80, 18 years. Then we, yeah, I graduate study in my nunnery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 2010, I, I graduate study. 2000, yeah, 2012, we have a big meeting about Kishima. During that time, I joined this meeting, this meeting. Mm -hmm. Then during that time, we talk about how do Gishima exam them how long and what subject we, yeah, about this and during that time meeting. We dis, yeah, uh, we met decision. Next year we start Gishima exam. In 2013, we can start Gishima exam. Mm. So I yeah, I joined this 
positive Gishim exam. Mm -hmm. We take Gishim exam for uh, four years. It has so many subjects. Yeah, we take yeah, uh, Gishim exam for total nine subjects. Mm -hmm. So during the first step, yeah, we are 21 months Gishim exam, two Gishim exam. For we have yeah, uh, two week then finish Gishim exam, yeah. For, uh, yeah, each year we yeah, each year we took each year we took Gishim exam nine tot, uh, total nine subject. Mm. Yeah. And and how many nuns graduated in total on that first class with Geshema degrees? Yeah, first class they go Geshema twenty one twenty twenty grad yeah graduate. Congratulations. And you were the first, that was the first Geshe, Geshema class to graduate in the Tibetan lineage. Yes. And what was the biggest challenge you faced when you were studying for those 17 years? Yeah, not 17 years. We total, I studied 22 years. Oh, sorry, 20, 22 <laughs> years. <laughs> Okay. Also, then I study one year tantra. Total, I study uh, twenty three years. Yeah. What was the biggest challenge you faced during the twenty three years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For example, when we Gishima, we took Gishima exam. During that time, the many yeah the subject is very difficult because it talk about emptiness and talk about um, bodhicitta and compassion. We have so many books. We reading this, and so uh, we spent. I spent most of the time reading and study, and ex during exam we couldn't. Yeah, I can't get, yeah, I get, I, I don't get sleepy more time. So sometimes <clears throat> very tired. And when we give some exam, we place change. For example, <laughs> first years, a nunnery, one nunnery. We, uh, we attend a nunnery, we took a give exam, a nunnery. Next year, a change. So, sound place is very hot. When we took Gishima exam, that the weather is very hot. So, we difficult, very uh, study very hard. The weather is very hot. So, tired, very tired. Thank you, Keshala. So, one thing I wanted to ask is you spoke about the difficulty of studying emptiness. What is emptiness and how do we know if we've had a direct experience of it? Yeah, the empty, we can say emptiness, but the emptiness is very typical to understanding. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we think, yeah, we appear to exist. Yeah, but we check, we to exist, we cannot find. So when yeah, but <clears throat> if we yeah, sorry, we have yeah, we appear a true exist, then we grasp it. Mm -hmm. Then oh, we check this. Where is the true exist? We check. We cannot find the true existence. So. When we are, yeah, that is the, the emptiness of the true existence. I can say, but we, when we yeah, check, it's very difficult to understand. How does that relate to bodhicitta? How does one who has realized emptiness, how does that help them cultivate 
the heart of bodhicitta. Yeah, the bodhicitta. I example, if a person who has bodhicitta, but he don't understand emptiness, yeah, he don't, uh, he hasn't emptiness wisdom. Mm -hmm. Then he want to, uh, he want to attend enlightenment, but he cannot attend enlightenment. For example, a bird, a bird, it has two wings, it can fly in the sky. It a bird, it has only one wing, it cannot fly in the sky. It's city, it exists in ground. He want to, he want to uh, fly in the sky. But he cannot, it cannot fly. For example, this, if a person who has bodhicitta, but he don't has emptiness wisdom, he cannot, and yeah, he cannot attend enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So the bodhicitta and emptiness wisdom, so the method and wisdom. They are together. If a person they are together, then try to yeah, practice and will attain yeah, will attend attend enlightenment. So bodhicitta and emptiness uh, wisdom is very related, very strong related. Thank you, Geshe-la. If you had to point to one or two teachers in your life or monks or nuns or anyone who you've met who has that wisdom of emptiness and that heart of bodhicitta who who would you say has embodied that the most that you've met or who has really stuck with you as a teacher who has that in their hearts? I have so many root lama in Tibet. Also in India, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I think His Holiness the Dalai Lama, he has bodhisattva and he has uh, emptiness wisdom, both. And was there a moment or an interaction where you really felt that? the first time you really felt felt that uh, inspiration? Conceptually. When he, uh, when he, yeah, he teach the people during that time, yeah, we know he has Bodhicitta and he, he has emptiness because we are uh, we can see his action, mm. his yeah, body action and his speech we can see so we know he has bodhicitta he has uh, emptiness wisdom every day he has. <laughs> Thank you, Geshe-la. Mm -hmm. So. One other question is, what are some of the greatest challenges currently faced by nuns in the Tibetan tradition? Mm -hmm. What are your greatest hopes for nuns in the Tibetan tradition? Mm -hmm. So greatest challenges and your greatest hopes. Yes, I have, yeah. I think this day, the nuns and also monks same come less become less a nun, less and less become a nun. Also monks become less and less because this day in a family who has one child children or only two children, so they, are, they go to school. So the new generation not come, not become, nuns and monks. 
So I think, oh, when time, our Buddhism, who, who practice, practice? Because none and less and less, monks and less and less. So I think th this is, I, oh, I worry about so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we try to, yeah, we try to, if, yeah, if be the nuns and monks less become, then we try to this in school, we try to this. Yeah. Everyone, yeah, fetish Buddhism, it's okay. Must, uh, we don't, if don't, yeah, if don't become a nun and monk, but the, there are lay people who practice Buddhism, it's okay. So we try to in, um, teach Buddhism in school. That is, I think that is important. <laughs> yeah. Also, I hope yeah, the nuns, yeah, this day, uh, Gishima and Kemo also and Herbal, they must become more and more, this day more and more. So the nuns can do everything, I think, I hope this. Sadhu. <laughs> <laughs> Geshe. Um, yes. You teach philosophy at Domoling Nunnery. What is your favorite subject subject to teach or mm -hmm. favorite author to teach? Yeah, my I teach uh, six parameter and in middle way also Abhidhamma and Duda Tari Lori letters. Uh, I, my favorite subject middle way. That's Nagarjuna. The author, the author, the John, uh, author. Uh, Chandra Kita. Hmm. Chandra Kiti. Uh, yeah. Why do you like to teach that the most? Because the emptiness is very important. It, yeah, it's difficult to understand, but it is very important. So I like to teach this subject. And Geshe-la, if you had to give um, you've come to America now and you are seeing how the monastics are living and how, you know, Americans are, are living and how their hearts are. If you had to give the people in America and the monastics in America one piece of advice, what would you tell us? Or what would you, how would you guide us? Yeah, I saw in monastic, yeah, monastic community in Abbey in America. And I saw in America, some village, but I don't see more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, we all, the, we are human beings, we want to happiness. So if we, yeah, happiness, we want to happiness and uh, overlast happiness, it is very important. So, yeah, <clears throat> if we want to happiness, we try to should be a good person and we should be good behavior and um yeah our, we try to make our mind yeah we try to ma make our mind calm calm mm -hmm. then we try to yeah friendly each other it is very important, I think. Thank you, Geshe-la. I have two more questions for you, if I could. Um, one is, some people pray to the bodhisattvas, like mm -hmm. Guanyin or Avalokiteshvara. How do we... It seems to contradict the idea that we create our own karma. 
how do we reconcile asking uh, bodhisattvas for help with the idea that we are the owners of our own karma? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we have good motivation, so we, yeah, <clears throat> we had motivation. In that time, we can, <clears throat> yeah, uh, good motivation and we recite, uh, recite our Loki Sharat Tandra or Tara Tandra. Yeah. So we create a good karma. For example, we um, prostrate to Buddha statue. Buddha statue. Yeah. During that time, we make good karma. We create karma. So it's same, I think. Cool. That makes sense. We steer our intention towards the right symbol and internal uh, recollection or, or something like that. And, and this is a related question is when we recite a mantra, is it just the intention that matters or do the syllables matter of the mantra? Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the important motivation, good motivation is important. If you have good motivation and you you uh, reciting reciting a tantra mantra, yeah, you recite a mantra. This is good. If you have don't uh, if you don't have good motivation, but you yeah uh, reciting only tantra account or I or I yeah account hundred thousand. Uh, mm. Ten thousand, but we don't have good motivation. Only us. Can I? Oh, I. Uh, for example, I. Mm, I recite. Uh, our Lokishara's mantra. Ten thousand. You say other people. Yeah, but you have the example. You have good, good motivation. That is not good benefit from this. If we have good motivation. And we recite or only two, three, or mantra. Yeah, it's better than one thousand. Yeah, mantra, mantra, account mantra. Yeah. Mm. And Geshela, what if we have good motivation and we recite a mantra, but we mispronounce the mantra? Do the what? words matter? Yeah. First day we try to what learning. Then we uh, <laughs> recite. <laughs> Thank you, Geshela. All right. I have one more. I have one more question for you, Geshela. Okay, Sorry. That's, that's, yeah. add one more. Okay. okay. Have you, well, as a prelude, have you been to all four holy sites in India, seeing because you lived there? Bodh Gaya, Lumbini, Kushinagar, and Varanasi? Mm -hmm. Which is your favorite? Which, is, uh, which site did touch you the most when you visited? I touched you, I most touched Bodh Gaya. Why did it feel like there for you? Yeah. Why? Because, because the Buddha, first enlightenment, Buddha got first enlightenment. This is very holy place, I think. That's a beautiful note to end on, Geshe, uh, Geshe-la. Huh? And... I just want to thank you so much for taking the time and for your journey. Uh, the idea that you started into robes when you were 15 years old and built a nunnery and did a, a year and a half prostration pilgrimage and then became one of the first Geshe, Geshemas ever. And now just all the goodness you're bringing into the world. It's a real honor to meet you and thank you for everything you've done. Okay, thank you.